one of the next pieces in line is this little guy right here, the Feed Eccentric Cub. And i got to tell you that I like working with eccentrics because when you're done with the actual part, you can mess around with the leftover material and have a really good time. Anyway, this is 50,000 soft center. Uh, the BOM calls for 5-inch brass, but I think that's probably because they didn't want to throw in a piece of half inch. This is going to be relatively easy. I'm going to make a split bushing from a stock size, a nominal size. That's 50,000 soft center. And we're going to make this part too sweet. Well, let's make that bushing first. It's a good thing to know how to do. Start with a short slug of a nominal diameter material. Make sure the material is big enough to accept the eccentric that you're about to cut into it. Indicate it true to the spindle. Zero out your digital. Or zero out your dials. At this point, it is your choice which direction to go. I need a 50 thousandths eccentric on this bushing, so I'm going to do it on the y axis. The table is now moving away from me. Boom. part is now sufficiently off-center. Whatever the material is that you plan to use, drill that size hole into it. Make sure it's an accurate hole. I'm going to drill and ream this for accuracy. And then when I'm done, I'm going to scratch a line across the center so that I know that I can cut this exactly on the center of the offset. Let's drill it. With the part held end to end in a secondary vise, align the marks that you just put on it to a vertical, pass it through the blade. If you hold it on the side, it'll close up and pinch and probably not end well. Clean it up and deburr it. You now have an eccentric bushing Without any fuss, use it in a collet. Let's do it.
the eccentric bushing is done now I got to do a hole in the center of this one got to size this accordingly so that it fits down over top of that eccentric afterwards cut some of this little excess material off drill a tap 080 hole a 0 80 hole in there which is about a millimeter and a half that's not a decimal 080 because some of you have said oh that's two millimeters actually it's not it's about 1.5 millimeters or one and a half millimeters better yet how's that okay going to strap this down to a little fixture plate bore the center out so that it fits that diameter drill and tap it and then probably clean up this draft off the outside although i like the way that looks that is just butt ugly because it's tapered and it's not going to work for me let's strap it down see what happens Part is set in the fixture plate and it was lined up with a gauge pin in the drill chuck. Run the pin down to the fixture plate surface. Bring the toe clamps in and secure them. Make sure you have enough room for the final size bore. This is very close to a nominal size. I'm going to plunge this with a two flute 375 end mill. And carbide end mills are usually a little undersized, so I'll use a gauge pin to check it. If it does not accept the gauge pin, I will then bore it. Let's do it. Uh, looks like we're going to have to bore just a little bit out of that 374 just rings in there and it's not going to be a good slip fit on that little cam so let me set up the boring head and we'll take that out this is not going to be a whole lot of material at all coming out of here so i'm going to have to just mark up the inside of the bore so i can see when we're making contact I only want to take about a thousandth or so out of here. And if you're asking me why don't I just ream this hole? Well, because I don't have a whole lot of grip with these clamps. And I'd rather not punch a big hole through the center of this little fixture plate. That would be why. All right. I'm going to probably do some time lapse here. I'm going to have to adjust this back and forth a few times. It is very close to making contact now, as you can see. And I'll tell you, sometimes this camera is a really good assistant. It tells me exactly what I need to see. Looking at this gap right here between the edge of the bar and the part. I'll close that up. And there we go. If you're curious, move it up and down ever so slowly until you see a scratch appear on that red line in the back. You can get away with this with softer materials without chipping the bar, that's great. But if you have a harder part, you might be in trouble if you do this. Knock the edge off your tool before you can start. Once you get close, spin it up. Depending on how far out your bar is extended, centrifugal force may cause the bar to cut a bigger diameter while it's moving than it would appear to be as it's stationary. Let's see what happens. Now I know I've preached this in the past and I'm just gonna return it. Make sure that the gap between your part and your boring bar is large enough so that you can stick a gauge pin in there without much difficulty. Got caught this time, let me adjust the table, which means I gotta move the tripod, so I will be right back. And whenever you deviate your table from its original starting position, that's when you're gonna find out whether or not the head is true. Well, let's take a ghost pass right here. See what happens.
I'm going to just take another superficial pass there. And one of the things I've seen now, you can't see it on camera, but when you have a nice snug fit with a gauge pin in a part, I don't know if it's by air or it's just a nice fit, and you're pulling on this thing and pulling on it, and it slips up and wipes the edge off of your tool, and you go, okay, well, back to square one. Stick something between the end of your gauge pin. Let you see that. Stick something between the end of your gauge pin and your bar so that when this thing does release, it doesn't blow the edge off your carbide bar or your high speed. I'm going to look around for a popsicle stick. That would be ideal. Actually, no popsicle sticks available. I'm going to use a precision wooden wedge. There you go. Perfect. I'll go back in for a very, very small dust cut on this. That should be money. Half a thousand thylen in. Let's see if it cleans up. Remember, when you put this thing together, you're going to need a chamfer or a radius on one side of this arm to accommodate or exceed the size of the radius on the shoulder on the cam. I'll point that out when I assemble it. I'm going to stand this up vertically on a gauge pin, mill this off, drill and tap it. Be right back. This pin is clamped in the vise securely, and I'm using a pin in a drill chuck with a piece of paper in the background so I can shadow this. Look for the gap. That is a very irregular surface on the side. And if you want to see what you're looking at, you want to see if it's lined up. See if you can hide the pin behind it, which I can. And that's how I'm going to line it up. I do have to apologize. I'm not going to be able to film the milling off of the top. It's a very simple operation and a tapping a hole through that. It's very conventional. It's going to end up stubby. But the battery's running out on my camera. And that's how it's going to be. And I do apologize for an earlier mistake. That is not an 080 hole. That is a 172 hole. Through there because I changed the rod that makes the connection. And it does fit on the eccentric this way. Nice slip fit on it. Let's take a look at how it fits on the actual unit. And what it does. Now, nothing is gapped here yet, so let's not get excited about you see something you don't think lines up. There's a lot of room for improvement here. Tapered rod you saw me do in the previous episode. And it screws right in there. And ultimately the linkage will go on here. I do appreciate all the feedback on the linkage, but if you were to see how this little end piece here is constructed, it's a sandwiched assembly with one piece that's stationary. And the anchor block and everything else migrates back and forth on the trajectory of the screw. And it can trap the paw. It's a fussy little design right there. And I'm probably still going to change it. So let me prop that up with something. We can cycle this through a couple of things and let you see exactly how that works. I'll take the weight off the end just for now. And keep an eye on the end of the rod. There you go. That is all I got for this particular area. And I thank you for tuning in, checking it out. It's been a lot of fun making this little piece. Hopefully the inside of this will sit flush 
when everything is gapped correctly. Not sure why there's just a, a blank square on the end of that. I'm sure it's for a crank lever for adjustment of some sort. But if you know exactly what that's for, if you've ever run a shaper, leave it in the comment line. I'd appreciate that. Uh, we are getting one step closer to having this actually sliding and clicking and popping. That's going to be a good day. That's all I got for today, guys. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, it's uh, been a lot of fun making these little pieces. I'm getting very close to being complete. Wherever you are in the world, I hope you are well and safe and happy. This is Joe Pyatt, Advanced Innovations in Austin, Texas. I'm out.